Weird Symbols Episode 5. It's crazy to think that there's still weird symbols out there that I haven't played yet. What's even crazier than that is that you haven't subscribed yet. But if there's some weird symbols out there that you want to see me play, be sure to drop a comment and you might just see them in the next episode. Also, big thanks to StainGeeks.com for sponsoring this video. I'll be using a bunch of their hardware today, and they're also hooking y'all up with 20% off all drum and percussion hardware with code RDavidR. So what better way to break in some new stands than with some weird symbols? When it comes to symbols, I'm sure everyone is familiar with B20 bronze as well as B8 bronze, but there's also some symbols made of B12 bronze. There's also NS12 symbols, then brass symbols are typically cheaper symbols, but this thing is made from stainless steel. And honestly, it's pretty basic looking. It's not quite 20 inches and has some hammering on it. The last stainless symbol I played wasn't really the best, so hopefully this one sounds better. I got this thing from my good buddy John up in New York. A lot of the uh, the weird oddball stuff I've shown over the years has actually come from him, so I guess he's my unofficial weird gear plug. I think I paid like a hundred bucks for this, which sounds like a lot because just, just look at it. <laughs> But for an artisanal, handcrafted, meticulously hand-hammered disc of carbon steel mixed with chromium, I think that's how you mix stainless, it's hard to find a better deal. I mean, this thing is 19 and 9 16 of an inch. Where are you going to find another one like that? It's even signed, a true indicator of a well-versed symbol craftsman that takes pride in all of his work. On a more serious note, this is a nicer grade of stainless because it's not magnetic. Typically cheaper grades are slightly magnetic because they use more carbon steel, which is cheaper than all of the other stuff that goes into stainless. Does that mean that it sounds better? I have no idea. I also have this sheet metal gauge, so let's see uh, how thick this thing is. She's 22 gauge. So in order to play this thing, I think I need a cymbal stand. Comes with a drum key. She's double braced. There's only one center tube, but it does go pretty high. This part as well as the tilter are geared tilters, meaning that there isn't infinite adjustability. You have to kind of catch it in one of the teeth of the gear. So not the end all be all fanciest stand, but it feels pretty solid and we even get a counterweight if we need. Just slide it on the boom and tighten her up. The real test will be clamping on the tom to this. And what's the point of a cymbal stand without a cymbal? This is a really interesting cymbal because you have a really fast and quick attack when you first hit it and then the sustain is still there, it kind of dies down a little bit, but it keeps the sustain. Typically, you know, normal trashier cymbals are like all attack and have a very fast decay and very little sustain. This one though has all of it. Definitely is rideable. You get a lot of stick attack and there is like a wash underneath it and the bell does cut. I think this is a keeper. I, I really like this symbol. The GMD Nebula. This one is left over from the previous episode. It's mega thin, mega size, and mega raw. This bent, beat, and battered bit of bronze is 27 inches, which is huge for a symbol. But honestly, it doesn't surprise me because GMD makes some massively huge symbols. Gotta zoom all the way out for this one. This thing is massive. As if this thing wasn't trashy enough, there's three holes in it, making it even more trashy. This thing has all the levels of trash to it. 
It's big. It's thin. It's a blob shape and isn't round. It's got holes in it. It's got a raw bell, extra crispy edges. She's not exactly the flattest. <laughs> the top is pretty raw. There is a little bit of lathing though. And we will have to deduct one trash point because the back is lathed, but uh, I think all the other points will make up for it. And if there is only one symbol to test the strength and stability of a symbol stand, I think this is your best choice. Oh yeah, she's solid. You could just breathe on this thing and it'll come straight to life. So one of the harder parts of uh, making these videos is finding tracks that work for the symbols, but I think I know exactly what genre this would be perfect for. four inch hi-hats. Now I've said this before, but weird hi-hats are really hard to come by and I was kind of freaking out because I couldn't find anything new. But then I remembered I have this little itty bitty baby tiny set of four inch hi-hats. I honestly forgot I had these because they're so small and I shoved them on the shelf to be lost and forgotten about for eons to come. Thankfully I remembered about them. These remind me of the symbols that those weird creepy monkey toys use. I have really low hopes for these. Small hi-hats aren't really a thing because they're so small and thin that they just don't really cut through the music. Typically when people want smaller hi-hats, they'll use bells because they're thicker and bells actually cut. I'm pretty sure Thomas Lang used to have a set of mini hats that were bells. Marcus Gilmore uses two nine inch Zill bells, which is like the craziest hi-hat combo if you ask me. Benny Greb, pre-Crasher Hat era, he used a bell in his mini hi-hat combo, I'm pretty sure. So really, if you want mini hi-hats to cut, you need some thicker, beefier cymbals, the total opposite of these little things. But as novel as these may be, they're actually made to be hi-hats, I think. The bell is so big on these to leave room for the clutch. That way, the symbols actually close before the clutch bottoms out. Hi-hat stand might come in handy. She's a two-legger. We got some parts, so we gotta put this together. Pro tip, if you're smart where you cut your zip tie, you can pull out the excess, and then you got a free zip tie. So there is some assembly required, mainly down here to attach the footboard to the uh, base. I assume it comes with instructions, but I didn't even need them because it was so self-explanatory. The 
These things look ridiculous. Imagine showing up to a gig with your four inch hi hats and 27 inch doomsday of death crash ride thing. Everyone always talks about how hi-hats bleed into your snare mic, but I'm pretty sure that my snare drum is bleeding into my hi-hat mic. The 12 inch Peisty Daru Jones PSTX DJ's ride cymbal. Get it? Because it's a 12 inch DJ disc jockey DJ Daru Jones. Now, before we can do a sound test, we gotta do a sound test. Don't forget, this is a 45 ride. Let's, uh, let's hear it. Not bad. Now, a little side note, I always find it interesting how uh, symbol companies describe their symbols through text. So as I read this, I want you to picture the sound of the symbol in your head, and then after we play it, tell me if this description is accurate. It's 12 inches, it has a medium weight and medium volume. The frequency range is narrow, frequency mix is clean. The stick sound is balanced. The response intensity is lively. Medium sustain, build character is integrated, and the feel is soft. Bright, warm, crisp. Narrow range, clean mix, light feel, crisp bell-like stick sound, dry, full, warm, distinct bell, snappy edge accents, unique minimalistic ride for articulate playing. So now that you have an idea of how this thing sounds, let's actually hear it. Is that what you had pictured in your head? This is a very specific ride sound that I think really fits Daru's playing, but doesn't really fit mine. It kind of reminds me of a splash mixed with a hi-hat bottom. So as weird as a 12 inch ride cymbal is, I'm going to make it less weird and make a set of hi-hats with it. You didn't think I was going to get rid of the 4 inch hi-hats, did you? That's right, a remote cable hi-hat. Well, I didn't really consider the fact that I need a clamp for this thing, and this is the, uh, the longest one I have. So all I did was adjust the boom so that it was facing this way, and then I was able to clamp onto that and get it close enough to where I wanted it. And it worked just fine. Also, for the bottom symbol, I used this thing, which is another GMD symbol. This is the uh, inverse wide lip bell. Pretty much just a big old thick bell. The 16-inch Wuhan Blank. 
This comes in a 12 inch all the way up to a 24 inch, but I decided on a 16 for reasons I'll explain later. But blanks are kind of a cheat code for weird symbols and I've showed a bunch in the past and some were more blank than others, but uh, this one is very blank. This one you can also just go online and buy. Most of the other ones I've shown have been either special orders or ones I found used. This is a legit blank. It's raw, it's dirty, it's crusty. Every time I touch it, my fingers turn black. The edge is as raw and jagged as could be. It's super sharp, so I don't think I'll be choking this symbol. Typically, a symbol shouldn't be able to saw through a drumstick. Also, good luck trying to mount this on a symbol stand. I'll have to drill that out, I think. It won't even fit through this hi-hat rod. It is pretty cool that they sell this as a blank and not as like a weird unfinished raw effect symbol. If we go to their website, it says that these blanks are for the percussionist that needs to literally create their sound. What we're offering is a completely white canvas that is waiting for the artisan to transform the crude symbol blank into their own sonic masterpiece. So the ultimate plan for this symbol is for me to lay it down, hammer it, and do whatever it takes to turn this into a real symbol. The only issue is I don't know how to do any of that, nor do I have the tools. I have a bunch of hammers, but I don't have a lathe, so I'll have to figure all that out somehow. But this is a long-term goal, so I have a bunch of research to do. So if anyone has any symbol making knowledge and advice, then drop it in the comments. And I went with a 16 because I have very low hopes for my skills to turn this into a good sounding symbol. So worst case, I use this as like a hi-hat bottom or something. But in the meantime, let's see how it sounds as is after I uh, drill this thing out. Let's pull this off. Grab the last stand. Put you here. And you here. Yeah, that's kind of what I was expecting. So one thing that makes a symbol not sound like this mm -hmm. is the fact that the edge is tapered, meaning that the outside of the symbol is thinner than the inside of the symbol. This thing has no taper on it and is just an even thickness all the way through, which is why it sounds so chunky. This is going to take a lot of work to make it sound halfway decent, so make sure you subscribe to see all that. Once again, big thanks to StanGeeks.com. Don't forget to use promo code or David R for 20% off all drum and percussion hardware, or you can just follow the link down in the description. Be sure to like and subscribe, drop a comment saying your favorite word symbol, and if you thought these symbols were weird, wait till you watch these other videos.